Okay, okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to Oakland Church. Uh, I am Tori, uh, the children's pastor. Thanks, thanks, Jason, worship team. And yeah, wow, what a great day to be alive. Oh, man. I um, hopefully had a good 4th of July. I thought I would represent today uh, because America. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope you had a good 4th of July. I hope that uh, it was, you know, encouraging, spent time with family and friends, and I, I really hope that um, it was a beneficial time. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a weird slide. So questions like, why is this guy up here? Where is Dave? You know, what, well, why? And good question. I also see like, why am I here? Uh, it, I love questions. And actually, so quick story. So last week, okay, I asked my kids because I do that. Um, in children's church, I'm like, hey guys, what's one question? Just one question you've always wanted to ask an adult, but have been too afraid to. <laughs> That was maybe a mistake. Um, <laughs> there was a little girl, sweet girl. She's like, oh, Pastor Tori. And I'm like, yes. And she's like, so you know when you're taking a bath? Mm, uh, sure. And she's like, well, when you wash your forehead and you're bald, how far up do you go? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know, kid, but... That's a great question to ask someone that's bald. I, you know, but no, questions are so good. I love questions, love asking them, um, you know, love being asked questions. And guys, did you know that today, the sermon we're about to hear actually started because of questions? And this actually started six months ago, actually almost literally six months ago. The first week of January, Pastor Dave, um, who's not here, he uh, asked, he told me, He's like, hey, Tori, you're going to preach. <laughs> but he asked, he's like, but what do you want to preach on? Which is a great question. I'm like, oh, yay, open slate. And if it wasn't for a book I just read, I would have been, like, very um, not scared. But I just read a book called Communicating for a Change by Andy Stanley um, and some other guy. I forgot his name. Sorry. But anyway, the book was maybe less than perfect, but I took away this one like, really key thing from the book. And basically the book talks about how the churches are kind of shrinking, but they're not growing because um, the culture has shifted and the churches kind of stayed in the same spot and the culture's moved on. And he had this like kind of phrase, I'm going to paraphrase it, but I took away from that book. He says, pastors, okay, so people like me, right? People that preach, people that, you know, lead a church. They said, pastors in our today's culture have done an excellent job answering questions that nobody's asking. And I'm like, oh, and so when Pastor Dave's like, what do you want to preach on? I'm like, oh, man. Oh, no. I don't want to be one of those pastors. That is, you know, great information that nobody cares about. So I'm like, ah. Oh. So I got kind of like in a panic six months ago, which is really weird because, like, I don't, I like preaching. But, like, I was really nervous. And maybe in a good way, right? Because this is a, a spot of, 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 you know, stewardship, and I want to honor God with it. And I was, like, freaking out. And so I'm praying. I'm like, God, what? What should I preach on? I don't know. I, you know, and I'm like, obviously, like, spilling in my head and going down to places to go. And God's like, Tori, just ask a question. I'm like, oh, duh. And so I literally asked okay, over 100 people. And I'm like, hey, if you could hear a one, two, three topics, a sermon that you haven't heard spoken about in the church, what would it be? And guys, oh my goodness, I got so many responses. Some of you guys probably have been asked, um, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and honestly, there's, there were so many things. I broke into 17 categories, um, and today we're going to preach about the number one thing. Um, but it, it was kind of weird, though, because, guys, there's a lot of questions that people have. And, and I, it's, it was revealing to me, honestly, like, wow, how come the church hasn't talked about this, right? Like, what's going on with that? Um, and maybe we have. Maybe we need to figure out how, like, maybe a better way to communicate it. And so in March, okay, um, 17 categories, the number one category we're going to talk about today you ready? Because <laughs> I'm not. No, I am. Um, <laughs> it's on singleness. <laughs> and I was honestly really super surprised because I interviewed people from 12 to 86. Single married, a huge gamut of people. And it was, I was so sorry, singleness? And it wasn't just single people that were like, hey, talk about singleness. It was like, <laughs> it was adults. So Tori, I, why are there so many singles in the church? or lack thereof, or if they are there, why are they still single, right? The millennials, what's up with that? Like, they're not getting married, not having kids, and, you know, and I was kind of surprised that there was a lot of questions about the topic singleness, and in fact, and singles isn't a millennial thing, right? I mean, there are, there are adults that are single, and people that have kids that are single, and so, um, just disclaimer, <laughs> this sermon is 
Um, you may not like me <laughs> afterwards, because uh, there are different views. Um, anyway, so in March, I'm like, you know, this is weird. I need to figure out how, how to communicate this, because there's so much information. So I came up with a 20-question interview, which lasted from like a half hour to an hour and a half. Um, and it was, it was fascinating. I interviewed about 57 people, and just asked them questions about singleness. And today, I'm going to share with you what I learned. <laughs> um, and there's so much information, so I'm going to kind of direct it. And also through God's word, my um, like God, teach me about singleness. Like, I'm single, right? So, like, I don't, why am I, even, am I qualified to talk about this? Maybe more if, I'm, if I were married. Um, but, guys, we're going to talk about singleness. And one of the questions in the survey was, who cares more if you're single, the world or the capital C church? Um, and so at Adventureland, I saw this. It was really funny to me. Um, <laughs> Wow, no single riders. <laughs> Who are you being singlest on me? Like, uh, you're single. You need somebody else. Like, you cannot ride this ride if you're single. <laughs> okay, it's a joke. It was funny to me, though. But, guys, that's a real, I mean, like, so the church, the world, who cares about singleness more? And, honestly, the, there are different views. I even interviewed some, some non-Christians. And, man, I love, love talking to non-Christians. I, I find it fascinating because their perspective, I love learning from that. Um, and so I got a big... Um, array of information. But guys, let's talk about singleness, because there is a lot of questions on this. Um, singleness, is it a gift? Well, I asked that question, and I think the majority said yes. One person's like, well, Tori, it's not a gift. I'm like, well, explain. He's like, you can return a gift. <laughs> and I'm like, what? what, what? He's like, you, you, can, you can return marriage. I'm like, okay, well, we're going to <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to get into that today. But, you know, it's interesting, though. Is it really a gift? Do we, as Christians, do, do we even see it as a gift? Or if you're not a Christian, like, what does that mean? Single, right? Yeah, freedom, right? We you know, kind of parade that a little bit. Sometimes it can be a real burden. And um, so I want to tread lightly here because this is a very sensitive topic. Um, hence, the kids are not here. <laughs> uh, they're upstairs. But I do, I want to be careful because um, this is a touchy subject. And so today we're going to dive into singleness. Is it a gift? Um, and by the way, when I say single, I'm quantifying that as not married. So if you're married, raise your hand. Great. Singles, look around. I'm just kidding. Okay, raise your hands. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I honestly, if you're dating or engaged, there's a transition happening there, and I, I, that's different. But, but guys, I think unless you make a covenant before God, you know, like I'm going to be with this person, I kind of separate the two. Um, so don't feel bad, guys, because, like, you know, I'm super single, and that's super okay. Um, but I, I want to just say that with singleness, if you're dating, engaged, you're not yet married. So th that's what kind of draw the line. So let's dive into it. I call this sermon uh, the single <laughs> purpose. Um, because the question isn't really, is it a gift? The Bible is pretty clear. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but what is the purpose of singleness in, in context in the church? Because um, there's a lot of differing views on that. And I wish, <laughs> I mean, it's all anonymous, the interviews, but I wish I could just kind of relay some, some stories. Man, I, I saw, I've seen grown men cry. And this topic is, is surprisingly touchy in the church context. Um, but yeah, what's the purpose? I think, you know, like, hey, what's the purpose of being single in the church? <laughs> but, but what? <laughs> like, we don't, do you even answer that question? Um, it, some people think, well, you can serve, right, ministry. Um, but if you're married, it's like there's more opportunity. At least that's what I've gotten from the interviews. So we're going to jump right into this. Um, and guys, I want to make a, 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 a difference. I've got to clarify this. The world views singleness um, and loneliness the same. And I think that is not true. There is a big difference between loneliness and singleness. And so before we even talk about singleness, we need to understand that those are not the two, they're not the same thing. They're different. And the Bible talks about them being different. Because guys, I interviewed with some couples, and they can feel very alone in marriage, right? So let's not confuse the two. We need to start here. Um, <laughs> so I shouldn't laugh. It's kind of funny. So what does the Bible mean gift? Because that can be very a loose term we use. Um, it's interesting to me. Uh, so we get that from 1 Corinthians 7, 7. Um, and, you know, Paul says, I wish all were like me who was single, you know. And he's like, and, you know, and being single, he's like, hey, everyone should use their gift, whether like me, single or marriage, you know, for the glory of God. And, and kind of goes on to talk about marriage. But like, whoa, Paul, like, T, T, for Tory, okay, singleness, how is that a gift? Because I think, oh, okay, the Bible says that both marriage and singleness are gifts, which is true, but do we really value singleness? Like, do we really value that as a gift? The Bible is very clear, 1 Corinthians 7, that marriage and singleness are both gifts. And it's funny because even in the interviews, I, <laughs> um, 
what do I say? Uh, <laughs> you know, okay, we'll just bring it to you guys. So, like, if someone's like, hey, man, I think you have the gift of singleness. Most people are like, bro, that ain't a gift. That's a calling. <laughs> you have been called. We call it calling. You have been called to singleness, but a gift? Or for someone that's married, hey, Victoria, man, I really think I'm called to marriage. We're like, bro, that's great. When's the date? We get all excited about marriage. We, we question the gift of singleness. Like, bro, are you sure? You, are you, did God really call you to be single? I don't know. Pray about it. Probably fast. Like, you want to be sure that God calls you to singleness. And guys, I'm, I'm thinking like, well, Scripture clearly says, 1 Corinthians 7, 7, that both are gifts. But why do we as a church elevate marriage, right? Oh, yeah, I'm all excited for you. And if you're single, it's like, oh, hmm, uh, yeah. I don't know if God's calling you to that. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm really not, because they're both gifts. But, you know, singleness and marriage are two sides of the same coin. And from the interviews, we've not been very consistent in that. There was a guy, and this is really interesting to me. I was talking to him about singleness, and he started to, like, get teary-eyed. I'm like, bro, like, I mean, we can pause or take a break. We can be done if you want. He said, Tori, he's like, I'm a guy. And he's like, do you know how hard it is to go to all my friends' weddings and be single? I'm like, well, yes. But he's like, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, and then I go to church. And everyone's like, oh, dude, you're single? How come? Or like, oh, hey, I, I can fix this. Like, I got a great girl. Like, she'll be great for you. And he's like, why is it that everyone thinks I'm single and I have a condition? I need to be fixed. He's like, am I not enough as a single person? And that's a very common thing. Other people have said, you know, when I was dating someone, families, couples would have me over for dinner. But all of a sudden, you know, oh, wait, now I'm single again or whatever. And like, you know, maybe... Uh, they don't invite me, any, they don't talk to me, they don't, like, hang out anymore because I'm single, and they, like, separate the two, and that's so sad. And so, guys, I, I mean, we're going to get, we're getting deep here, but, man, I wonder, I wonder if us as a church valued singleness. Like, you know, I think I'm called to singleness. Bro, that's awesome. How can you use that gift? And, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be hard because I, I think Oakland's really good at, um, at loving both, and there are some great, awesome singles in this church which I, I really respect and appreciate. Um, but guys, just from the array of people I've talked to, there's a misconception, and there is, is some bias, some judgment uh, on singles. And even if it's not meant to be insulting, it can be hurtful. And I don't think it's just been aware of that as much. And so let's talk about it. So like, okay, well, why is that, all right? Okay, so we need to define the word gift. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so t- marriage takes work. You think singleness is hard? Yeah, singleness is hard. Marriage is hard, too. <laughs> and I, I mean, okay, so... I, so I'm told, I'm not married. But from what I hear, marriage takes a lot of work too. So I think we need to be careful here because like, well, singles is so hard and it is hard. But let's not forget marriage is hard. In fact, Ephesians 5, Paul says, hey, hey, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He got crucified. <laughs> so married, married people out there, uh, hold up, uh, According to the Bible, husbands, are you ready to be crucified for your bride? I mean, yeah, you know, people say, oh, singleness, that's a calling. To me, I'm like, oh, marriage, that, that's a calling there. Uh, I mean, tongue in cheek, right? So, I, like, it's may, maybe uh, it's hyperbole there. But, like, marriage takes work. And I think we forget that sometimes. We, we so badly want to be in a relationship, and we forget that there is a high calling on both sides. And so the question really isn't, oh, I don't want to be single. I want to be married. The question is, who, what's my purpose? Because there's purpose in marriage, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. There's purpose in singleness. And yet we don't focus on the purpose, we focus on our relational status. And there's a disconnect. So let's define the word, let's define the word gift. Um, for, again, 1 Corinthians 7, 7. Um, so the, the word <laughs> gift, uh, like present, a birthday gift, in the Greek is doron. But in 1 Corinthians 7, that's not what Paul uses. He uses a different word for the word gift. Singleness is a gift. And that's actually um, this word, you can see up there, charisma. Um, Like, what does that mean? Well, literally, in the Greek, the word charisma means spiritual gift. Well, Tori, what good is that? Okay, well, let me tell you why this is really big and this is a big deal. So, spiritual gift. Um, What are some spiritual gifts, guys? Let me hear something. Spiritual gift in the Bible. Shout out at me. What what we got? Spiritual gift? Encouragement. Encouragement, yes. Preaching. Preaching, yeah, yeah. Hot. Yeah, yeah, great, yeah. Spirit, there's a lot of spiritual gifts. Nobody says singleness. <laughs> uh, which, I mean, I don't blame you. It's kind of a weird spiritual gift. But according to Paul, 
singleness and marriage are spiritual gifts. So what do we do with that? Well, what are spiritual gifts used for? Um, you know, according to Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians, you can see it on the screen, 14, Paul says, or God says, that all spiritual gifts are for the, the church. That's right. For building up the body of Christ. Now, <laughs> there was a guy, he's like, well, you know, and he's single, and he's a great guy. Um, he's like, well, Tori, I don't think I have the spiritual gift of singleness. I'm like, oh, okay, why not? He's like, because I don't like it. <laughs> he's like, spiritual gifts you like, right? Oh, yeah, I like this, I like this. He's like, well, I don't like the spiritual gift of singleness, so I obviously don't have it. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm like, well, um, there are a lot of spiritual gifts in the Bible that people didn't like. Uh, so things of the Old Testament, prophecy. Um, did everyone like prophecy? Oh, I love memes. This is a meme for all you meme friends. Yeah. <laughs> prophecy. <laughs> oh, so good. Yeah. Oh, what kind of spiritual gift do you have? Oh, you already said it. Yeah, prophecy. Think of the prophets. Jonah, right? God called him to be a prophet, to go to Nineveh. Did Jonah want the gift of prophecy? Uh, yeah, one does not easily. Yes, yes. Yeah, so why does that easily say Nineveh? No, Jonah did not want the gift of prophecy. Yet God called him to that. Now, I, I, hope you enjoy your, I hope you enjoy your spiritual gifts, right? They're built for the body of Christ. But just because you don't like it doesn't mean you're not gifted in it or that God wants to use it. And so now let's take us into the, the sense of spiritual, spiritual gift, okay? So, right, so it's a spiritualness. Like, okay, what does that mean? Like, Tor, what's the point, right? You know, think of Moses. He was also a, a prophet, but he had the gift of leadership. Did he want that gift? He's like, no, take Aaron, take my brother. I don't want to lead these people. But God gifted him. And guys, we need to understand that, I mean, I hope you like your gift. Maybe you don't know what your gift is, but the Bible says that singleness and marriage are both gifts. And they need to be used for the church. So, Tori, what does this mean? What does this mean? <laughs> guys, we need you. Hey, it's all, it's all you married couples out there. Praise God. I'm glad you're married. Us singles, we need you. To, to, to all, you know, the married couples talking to the singles, guess what? We need you too. The body of Christ, it has many moving parts. But spiritual gifts are used to encourage and build up the church. And I think one of the problems with our culture is that we don't really think, like marriage, yeah, it's a gift. But singleness, nah, man. Like, what can I offer a church? <laughs> You know, when I was uh, in college, um, you know, furthest west I've ever been, I went to Omaha, went to school, knew, I didn't know anybody, I mean, other than, like, my roommate. <laughs> like, I didn't know anybody. And, um, you know, not a bad deal. I don't mind being, you know, strangers and becoming friends. But there was a family, a couple, called The Rise. And for whatever reason, they're like, hey, Tori, we're going we're gonna to be your parents in Omaha. And guys, they, they so greatly impacted my life as a single guy. They loved me. When I was sick, they brought me soup. Like, the shoes I'm wearing, well, not these. The ones I, I switched out of, I had no shoes. Like, my shoes were super holy and not in a good way. And like, Tori, we're going to buy you some new shoes. <laughs> like, they loved on me. And they used their, their gift of marriage, a family unit, to really bless and encourage me. I am, am a, a recipient <laughs> of, of couples loving on me. And guys, and I guess I'm going to empower you singles. Hey, if you're single, you have a gift too. And the couple's in this church need you. And I'm not talking just like volunteering, although that's great, please volunteer, right? I'm just talking about, oh, you know, if you're sick, we'll bring you food. Although, yeah, you know what? Families can be busy, so if, you have, if you're single and you can love on a family, do that. But guys, we have so much to offer, and I think we forget that, that God wants to use your spiritual gift of singleness for his glory. Um, I guess I, I want to pause here because um, this, is, this can be hard. Because um, being single can be, uh, well, it's challenging. And it's so easy to feel alone. And the world parades, you know, you know, parades, you know, debauchery and, and sex and all these different things. And for a single person to be holy, it can be really hard. And you can feel very left out. And so I, I, I want to be sensitive here because you guys all have stories, right? Singles isn't just, again, millennials. It can be, you know, people who are divorced. It can be widows, you know. And that can be hard. And singles also need other singles. <laughs> and not like dating, but like the body of Christ is, it should be used to, to build each other up. And singles in the interviews, so many singles said, yeah, 
I don't know what to offer the church. Like, I go to church, I feel like a second-class church citizen, you know? I don't have a family yet, different, phase, different stage of life. There aren't many of people my age, or if they are, they're not interested in me, right? And, and it feel, you can feel very, very alone. And something that I learned, um, and it's honestly been, um, I'm still learning it, but Satan knows that too. And so guys, what the enemy can't destroy, he distracts. What Satan can't, he can't, you know, you're, you're saved, you're, you're, you're a child of God. He can't defeat you, but if he can get you to forget your purpose, if he can think, oh, you don't have a spiritual gift, let me distract you with this. One of the biggest things I've seen in the interviews is selfishness. It's one of the easiest things for singles to get caught up in, and we get distracted on why we're here, why God calls us, even to be single for a season, and that might, you know, that might change, but God calls us to different seasons, and, and if we get distracted for our purpose, we get very self-focused. There was a lady, a um, really cool lady, a uh, missionary, she's, I think, 50s, 60s, I could, didn't ask, <laughs> but she, um, she, a great lady, I was talking to her about the singleness, and, um, and she goes, Tori, she's like, I'm single, and she's like, I dated a little bit when I was younger, and it just wasn't for me, and, and she's like, and guess what, she's like, I found out that I'm also barren, and so because of that, it kind of deterred a lot of guys, um, and that was so heartbreaking, and this is what she said to Tori, but here's what, she, guess what, she's like, God showed me that I could have more spiritual children by devoting my life to him. What an awesome perspective as a single. What kind of courageous, like, you know, I'm single, and you know what? I'm going to use that for God's glory. Guys, the purpose of singleness and marriage is the same one. It's to give God glory. And a story about my distraction. So when I was in college, I was a senior um, and just had a really really rough start um, to the year. Um, you know, I met a girl, and I thought she was great. Everyone thought she was great, and um, turns out, you know, she, she broke my heart. Uh, <laughs> I say that laughingly. I, I mean, it, it was awful. Um, but yeah, she broke my heart, you know, lied, you know, deceived me, and I just was so broken, and guys, I was so distracted. I was, I was so, I was hurt, and, and there's, a, there's a place for hurt, but I got so self-centered, and I'm like, what, you know, I'm, I'm a victim here, God. Can't you see what I'm like? Like, I've, I've devoted my life to you, and I did the best I could to honor you through knowing this girl, and turns out I just got wrecked. And um, I'm just speaking of another couple that invested in me. Um, Dr. Holmes, Bible professor at Grace University um, and academic dean, great guy. I met with him weekly for almost three years. And so I'm meeting with him, and you know, I'm a senior, right? I'm like, Dr. Holmes, like, dude, like, like yo, help me out, because I, I, I am hurting and nobody can really relate, it felt like. <laughs> Do you know what he tells me? He goes, Tori, I love you, man, and you are so selfish. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Holmes, I feel about this big. <laughs> like, what, what, what? He's like, let me tell you a story. And, you know, I love the guy. He's like, okay, fine, I'll just let that slide. He's like, you know, Tori, I'm married. <laughs> He's like, and every day I wake up, and I have a beautiful bride next to me. I'm like, yeah, not helping. <laughs> He's like, and you know what? He's like, every day I wake up and I know my purpose. I know my calling. God's called me to make disciples. He's given me a family, given me a school, given me a church. He's like, there is no mystery in my life. I know what God wants me to do. I'm like, again, not helping. <laughs> and he's like, but you. He's like, you, you have no idea who you're going to marry. You have no idea what career you're going to have. You wake up and it's a giant mystery. And I'm like, what are you trying to do to me right now? <laughs> He's like, here's the catch, though. He said, we had the same purpose, to give God glory. And it's like, and right now, there is a giant question mark in your life. He's like, and God has not left you. He said, so in this moment of mystery, embrace the mystery with Jesus. He said, one day, you, you will know. There will be mystery. One day, you're going to know what God has for you. It's like, don't let Satan distract you in this season to be focused on self. Think about how God can use you as a single. And it was interesting because, honestly, guys, I, I became a pastor. I was actually encouraged by some people, don't become a pastor for single because that's just, eh, you know, not good for you. But, like, first of all, Jesus was single. He had a great ministry. So we'll, so we'll sidestep that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, also, like, God can use singles in the church. And so many singles don't believe that, and it breaks my heart. I, I, I mean, I cried with some guys, and, and um, just hearing how 
they feel so alone, like God can't actually use me. And guys, this is what God taught me through this. This is, this is huge. This is huge for me. Um, <laughs> when you find purpose, when you know why God wants you, then you find peace. If you don't realize why God has you here, you're going to be focused on yourself. You're going to be seeking ways to make yourself feel good. And guys, I understand, like, I still struggle with that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm single, right? And that's a struggle for anyone, really. But when you have a spouse, they usually point it out, <laughs> I feel like. Um, but if you don't know your purpose, you won't have peace. Paul, also a single guy, hence the verse. He, he says, I learned to be content in all circumstances. <laughs> what? First of all, you have a whole history of like getting beat up and shipwrecked and stuff, but you're also single, so what, how can you be so content? I never understood that. And guess what, guys? Paul knew his purpose, that God had called him to something better than himself, and he believed that. And because of that, I could be beat up, I could be kicked out of towns, I can be single. And you know what? I know why God has me here. And nothing in this world can, 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 can tamper my contentment because you are with me and you want to use me. And guys, this isn't just for singles. This is for marrieds too. Because guess what? We can lose our purpose at any stage of life. And so I want to encourage you guys, guys, if you don't know your purpose, <laughs> well, let me tell it to you, okay? <laughs> the Bible says, John 15, 8, I love it. It says, it is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. We are put on earth not to be single, not to be married. We are put on earth to give God glory. And how beautiful is it, guys, that God, the God of the universe, wants to use people like you and me. That's what I mean. God wants to use you. Why is that? No, God wants to use us. God wants to use us because God believes in us. And guys, let me not just tell you from my perspective. Let's see what the Bible has to say. Okay? So 1 Peter 2.2.9. What does the Bible say? Oh, I hope you can read that. Um, but, but Peter says, well, God says, for you are a chosen people, a royal, you are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. And as a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he, God, has called you out of the darkness and in his wonderful light. God, that's a promise. Do you believe that God's called you? Do you believe that you're actually God's possession? Okay, another favorite verse of mine. Deuteronomy 7, I love Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the best. Deuteronomy 7, 6, so good. Um, you know, Moses pens or someone pens, whoever wrote, whoever wrote this book. For you are a holy people who belong to who? To Yahweh, your God, out of all the people on the earth. The Lord, your God, has chosen you to be his own special treasure. Married singles, do you know that you're a treasure? And not just to like a person, but to the creator of the universe? That God has put too much purpose in you for you to stand on the sidelines. That God thinks you are special, that you are worth treasuring. And guys, if God says that, who am I to say he's wrong? God believes in you. Don't let Satan distract you. And the other verse, I love this, this next verse is really good. Ephesians uh, 2.10. Um, man, this, <sighs> I love this. Paul says, for we, the Christians, God's body, we are God's masterpiece. Okay, pause. Hey, you know that you're a masterpiece? <laughs> Not to me, well, maybe to me, but to God, right? Actually, look at the person on your left and say, you are a masterpiece to God. Just do that right now. <laughs> yeah. And let's do the right side. Just go, you know, let's, let's even out. Let's be equal here. Yeah. You are a masterpiece to God. Okay? Now look, I don't care how lame you feel. I don't care if you feel as like ugly as a sloth. I don't, I don't care how you feel. According to God Almighty, according to the creator of the universe, you are a masterpiece. Okay, let's continue. So, for we are God's masterpiece, okay? He, God, has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he, God, planned for us long ago. So check this out, guys. Not only does God believe in you, not only does God say you're a treasure, you're a masterpiece, God has an agenda. He's plans up. Okay, Tori, you don't know this yet, but I want you to do this and this. Oh, yeah, and we turn this age, I want you to do this and this. Like, God wants to use us. 
why? <laughs> like, why? We're sinful people. We are de- we're dependent. We need God. And God's like, hey, you're sinners. It's okay. I love you anyway, and I'm going to die for you. And guess what? I don't want to just save you from hell and live with me in heaven. I want to use you. Wow. Marrieds, do you believe that? Singles, do you believe that? This is a, again, <laughs> I feel like I'm just a broken record, but guys, it's so true. God loves you, and he wants to use you because you have something to offer. You have too much, pur- look up here, guys, look up here. <laughs> you have too much purpose. You do, I don't my kids, kids, look at me. Look. <laughs> you do, you have too much purpose to not believe God's promise. God wants to use you. Don't let Satan distract you by the different things in the world, because God wants to use you, and God doesn't make mistakes, obviously, masterpiece, but God believes in you. Church, we need to encourage and, 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 and build up, like, hey, you're single, praise God. How can I be your friend? How can I help you in this journey of this season? If, if you're talking to married, you're married, praise God. How can I help encourage you in my season, in your season? How can I come alongside you? Because, guys, the church, we need each other. And um, I, this is huge, right? Embrace the mystery of Jesus. Um, okay, so who am I, right? I think purpose. Okay, God, like, I need a purpose question. Like, who am I? Um, guys, that's actually the wrong question to ask. I used to think, God, who am I? Like, give me purpose. Who am I? No, no, it's not who am I. It's whose am I? You can't see that. Oh, kind of. <laughs> whose am I? Because, guys, that changes everything. It's not who am I. It's God, who do you say I am? I belong to the creator of the universe. Almighty Yahweh, I belong to him. Therefore, I have purpose. I love what, <laughs> okay, I love a lot of things. I love Isaiah, oh, Isaiah 40, the whole, it's so good. I, Jesus, okay, God says, uh, dirty, sinful Israel. He's like, I am the Lord who loves you, who has called you. And he says, I bend down with an outstretched arm to take your hand and to whisper to you, do not fear. Guys, we have a God who is so intentional with us, who loves us so much, he bends down and t- lovingly, like, like we're a child, because we are. I'm a children. I'm a children. I'm a child, right? God loves us so much, and he is willing to get down at our level and encourage us. That is amazing. So don't ask, who am I, for my purpose. Ask, whose am I? And when you understand you are God's God's son, daughter, child, that you have so much purpose. And we're, we're gonna wrap up here in just a second, but I, I love this, just this quick, this is quick, really, I guess just a sentence, really. You might be single, but you are never alone. God will never once leave you or forsake you. God knows the hurt and he knows the challenge, but guess what, guys? God is with you. And that can be scary. <laughs> That can be hard. It is hard. It can be. It is hard. It's hard to be single. (laughs) And some days are better than others. But you have something to offer. So you are single, but never, ever alone. And I love love this because um, (laughs) this is a truth, not just for adults, not just for teens. So yeah, teens, listen up. God wants to use you too. So this is not just for big kids, right? God wants to use kids. Um, I, (laughs) where'd it go? Yes, so. Um, I taught I taught this song. No, um, God wrote this song, but I taught it to the kids, and it's this verse right here. I'll play it for a second here. Um, Joshua 9. Love this verse because it is hard to be courageous, especially when you feel like you don't have purpose. Hey, kids, come on out. Um, it can be really, really hard. And not only can it be hard, it can be scary. But look what this verse says. Okay, Joshua 1, 9. And let's just read it all out loud together. Yeah, come on, girl. Come on up. Um, It says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Why? Why not? For the Lord your God will be with you. Where? Wherever you go. Do you guys know that God not only commands us to be courageous, but God believes in us? And he's not going to just like, okay, here you go. Here's a gift. Go do something. He's like, hey, I'm going to be with you wherever you go. And so these are my awesome kids, guys. Hey, welcome on stage, my friends. Um, we wrote, uh, we didn't write, it right. we made the actions and the music to this song. Um, and there are emotions to it, so feel free to jump along in. Um, I can't play into the emotions too. 
So we're going to sing this verse because um, God is worthy of our praise. And this verse can mean as much to an adult as to a single. All right? And children. Okay, guys, you ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. That's right. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. La, la. That's right. La, la. La, la, la. Let's do it again, guys. This is my command. That's right. It's a command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Yeah. For the Lord your God, He will be with you wherever you go. La la, la la, la la la. It's faster. La la, la la, la la la. La la, la la. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Good job, guys. Hey, great job, Margaret. Oh, yeah, awesome. A plus. You know, so, guys, that's, it's a fun song. It's a great verse, but it is so true. God, right, kids? So, so do we have to be afraid? Do we have to be afraid? No, of course not. We don't be afraid. Why do we not have to be afraid? Because God is with us. And that's true for kids. That's true for adults. So, guys, I'm going to pray for us, um, and then we'll be dismissed. Uh, but I hope you walk away and you realize how much purpose you have. And if you don't feel like you have purpose, God is right there with you, holding your hand. And God believes in you. So let's pray. Uh, dear Father, thank you. <laughs> thank you for these awesome kids. Thank you for an awesome church. And God, I just, <laughs> I'm so grateful that you see value in me when I don't even see value in myself sometimes. And Lord, I pray that all of us would walk away empowered because, God, you say we have value. We are your special treasure. And, Lord, I pray that we would see ourselves as masterpieces because, God, you don't lie. You don't make mistakes. And you know that we need each other. So, God, thank you for loving us, uh, literally loving us to death on a cross. And that through that, you didn't just save us, God. You you made us with, with spiritual gifts. So may we use those for your glory. And, and that we may never, never be distracted by Satan's lies. Father, we love you. We thank you for, for all the gifts that you give. May we walk away today with a little better appreciation for you, for each other, and in ourselves. Because you say we have value. In Jesus' awesome and powerful and mighty name, amen. Thanks, guys. You're dismissed.